Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It's two o'clock. The weather is looming over my right and left shoulder, so we better get moving. Welcome to the Elizabeth Van Moore Park on this monumental occasion. Y'all didn't get the pun. Come on. Yay. Yay. It's such an appropriate occasion as it is National Constitution Day, a day we set aside every year to celebrate the great document that created the government that we all live under to this day. 230 years and counting. It's an amazing story. And Dr. Hugh Williamson was one of 39 signers of the Constitution, and he resided here in Edenton, as you know. With that, um, I would like to now call on, wait a minute, before I do that, I want to make one, so, a couple of recommend, uh, recognitions, if I might. Um, a lot of effort went into putting this together, and some of you may know that this process is plus or minus 18 years in the making. We've had some very tenacious and uh, persevering personalities that have worked on this project for those many years. And I think it's very symbolic of Edenton's history. Uh, we have citizens who care about our community. We have citizens now who care about our history and recognizing that um, the good doctor had been left out at, with a formal recognition, worked tirelessly to bring about uh, the dedication of this monument today. The Hugh Williamson Committee was comprised of, or is comprised of, Judge Terry Boyle, Beth Taylor, Virginia Wood, Bob Hopkins with the State Historic Sites Office here in Edenton, and the committee was chaired by my fellow council member, uh, Bob Quinn. So I want to thank all of them. If you would join me in a round of applause for their efforts. And the Tea Party chapter of the DAR was in lockstep with everyone as the process moved forward. I would like now to recognize the wreaths that are to my left, to your right, commemorative wreaths that are placed here today on the grounds. First, uh, the American Legion Post 40, represented by Maureen Soblewski. The Unanimity Lodge, represented by Master John Dunn. The Albemarle SAR, represented by President Chris Grimes. And the Edenton Tea Party National Society of the Daughters of the Revolution, represented by Chaplain Julia Elmore. Thank you for adding that touch of patriotism to our program this afternoon. I would like to now call the Reverend Malone Gillum to the podium to lead us in a benediction. I mean, excuse me, it might be. That's what, that's what getting wet will do to you. Our invocation, Malone. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty Father, we praise you for the blessings brought to the world through your Son. We bless you for our fellowship in Christ with you and with each other, for the teaching of the Scriptures and for the preaching of your Word. We thank you for the holy example of your saints, for your faithful servants departed this life and for the memory and example of all that has been true and good in their lives. Number us with them in the company of the redeemed in heaven, Father. Kindle in every heart the true love of peace, and God, with your pure and peaceable wisdom, those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Thank you, Malone. And now for the presentation of the colors, we have as our guest today to present the colors representatives from the Coast Guard based in Elizabeth City. If you would, please. Please stand and remain standing after the colors. And we will say the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our Boy Scout troop. And then together we'll sing the national anthem led by the album All Sound. Please be seated. <laughs> you stood up long enough just to get your seat wet, right? <laughs> like our steadfast commi committee, we will persevere. We will ride out this little storm. Okay, next on our program this afternoon, we will hear um, comments from three of our guest speakers, beginning with uh, the Honorable Bob Steinberg, who represents us in the North Carolina House of Representatives, and Bob's going to share with us the story surrounding the monument and, in part, how it got here. Bob, thank you for being with us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great being in here uh, here on this, uh, as it's been referred to, on this uh, monumental occasion. I first came to learn about the efforts to erect this memorial after, uh, soon after I was elected to represent uh, Edenton and District 1 in the State House of Representatives. And this is something, and I'm going to share some of these dates with you in this timeline with you. This has been something that has really been in the making for 70 years. As a matter of fact, I mentioned at the 4th of July celebration that uh, I'm almost there. I'm one away from 70, so uh, this has been a long time, but folks have been 
vigilant and diligent and persistent. And uh, as a result, we are here today, and you can see the fruits of, uh, of that effort on the part of many. In May of 2000, uh, Beth Taylor had just been installed the Edenton Tea Party NSDAR regent. And her friend, who was sitting right next to her there, Virginia Wood, approached her with two visions. Number one, do a 4th of July ceremony and read the Declaration of Independence on the Courthouse Green at the Joseph Hughes Monument. This vision has been happening now for 18 years. Second on the list was to have a monument created in homage to Hugh Williamson, signer of the United States Constitution. Now, a monument was erected in 1932 to honor Joseph Hughes as part of the federal bill to erect a monument honoring the Wright brothers at Kill Devil Hills. The Edenton Tea Party was chartered in 1948, and at their first meeting, the minutes read, Mrs. English Fletcher called attention to the fact that there is no historical marker to Dr. Hugh Williamson. It was to be investigated, but nothing happened. So we're going to move on to 2000, year 2000, beginning of this century. On September 17th of 2001, Constitution Day, uh, there's a 12 p.m. ceremony honoring Dr. Hugh Williamson and the uh, the NS, uh, rather the NCSDAR state officers were present at that time. The uh, speaker was the state regent, Betty Boyd, Judge Terry Boyle, who is with us here today. But because of the Constitution Day events, Edenton Tea Party chapter, chapter won the Gertrude Carraway Constitution Week Silver Bowl. This was the formal announcement of this particular project. Try reading this with all of the ink running because of the rain. I'll tell you, this is, uh, this is just like it's written in hieroglyphics here. In 2003, the drawing that was approved was an elliptical wall for the more, for the, uh, up at the Hughes Monument, bordering it. That was the first plan that was presented in the year 2000. In May 2004, a grant application was made to DOT's enhancement program, which was unsuccessful. 2002 to 2005, work commenced again on funding and drawings. On August 9th, 2005, word was received that uh, $300,000 was in the kitty uh, provided by the North Carolina General Assembly budget for this project. The funds would be handled through North Carolina Cultural Resources and the State Historic Preservation Office. So 2005 to 2009, they worked with the architectural firm on the drawings and it got bogged down again. In June of 2009, the funding was lost is that $300,000 moved back into the general fund of the General Assembly. So things were once again at a standstill until July 4th, 2015, when Beth Taylor approached me about funding. My answer was, get me a drawing and get me a budget, please. Then Mayor Vaughn and Bob Hopkins talked about putting the monument in Queen Anne Park, where we are today, and move the lighthouse bell in the, in the vicinity of the Roanoke River Lighthouse. Now that, my friends, was really a brilliant idea. <laughs> Good things come for those who wait patiently. Frank Parker drew a design for the monument presented a cost figure, and the working, and the wording rather, was already scripted, 
and a site plan was drawn. All the information was hand delivered to me on March 14th, 2016, so we were moving pretty quick. On July 4th, 2016, I announced that the funds had been approved for the monument at the Joseph Hughes Monument, talking about this monument here. Now, all the necessary permits were approved and the contract was signed September 26, 2016. The monument was installed in April of 2017 by the good folks at Parker Monuments. That's Frank and Suzanne Parker, and they worked with us through the entire process and did the, did the final drawings. They were, they were very, very patient as well. All of those years, and then it happened so fast. However, we know that the delay was because the monument was planned for the wrong location. It now has the proper location. And we are here to dedicate that monument today. Seventy years after it was discussed, a monument has been erected in honor of Dr. Hugh Williamson. Virginia Wood's vision is now a reality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Very informative. And again, speaks highly of the perseverance, persistence, diligence, and just refusing to give up uh, by people in this community when they commit themselves to getting something done. I would now like to call on Judge Terry Boyle for his remarks. Terry, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to recognize and thank uh, the people who are essential for our being here today, the, the mayor and uh, Anne Marie, uh, Bob Quinn, Virginia Wood, and Beth Taylor are some of the people without whom uh, this would not have happened. I'm not going to talk too loud. It's kind of impressive to be introduced by thunder and lightning. And I, don't, I don't know that I want to test my, my luck. Uh, ha, in preparing for this, and I've flooded my mind with information, so I'll spare you a break in the dam. And if you want to talk about it uh, in another uh, setting, I'll be, be glad to. But uh, I kept coming back to the idea of uh, who exactly is you, Williamson, and why is that important? And I'll say a few words about that. But if you took yourself back 230 years into Philadelphia, it would be a Monday morning, and you would be uh, in the town with uh, Independence Hall and the delegates from 12 of the 13 states, Rhode Island chose not to be involved, would have been meeting from approximately May 24th or 5th until September 17th. And so they'd been together for about four months solid, and they had a pledge, and George Washington was the chairman or presiding officer, and they had a pledge that they enforced to keep their activities a secret because they didn't want the public to get involved. They wanted to uh, come up with a new solution to uh, freedom and government in, in America. And in thinking about it, uh, they were sent there by their states because the Articles of Confederation had not been successful. They had not provided the kind of security and government and leadership that uh, the young country needed. And instead of following the mandate that they had to uh, revisit the Articles of Confederation, they threw them out, and they threw them out without anybody knowing about it, and they came up with an entirely new structure of government. And I was thinking, there were 55 delegates, 39 signed, 42 were there on the day of uh, closure on September 17th, and uh, I was thinking that they were all political persons, and they really didn't know if it was the beginning of their political career 
or the absolute end of their political <laughs> career because they had no way of knowing what the uh, outcome would be. They had to go back to the people and to the states. Williamson was a Philadelphian. He was born in Chester, Pennsylvania. He was educated at what's now the University of Pennsylvania. He was in the first graduating class. He then took a higher degree and taught mathematics there. Over the course of his life, he, he was born in 1735 and he died in 1819. He lived to be 83. He came to Edenton by accident in 1777. He and his brother were in Charleston. They were uh, engaged in mercantile and shipping business. He tried to get back to Philadelphia, but the British had uh, embargoed the Chesapeake Bay and he couldn't get uh, up to where he wanted to go. So he came into Edenton and he had a full ship with supplies and he began a business right here. I think it's reputed that he lived around the corner and on the uh, corner of uh, Oakham and King. He didn't leave a house. He didn't leave any family. He's hard to follow for that reason. He was one of the five North Carolina delegates. He was the most prominent and effective one. Uh, in some respects because he understood the language. He was part of the identity of people from other states that were in the Constitutional Convention. He was an intimate of Franklin's. He worked with Franklin in scientific uh, activities. He was trained as a medical doctor. He had degrees from Edinburgh, Scotland, and from Utrecht in uh, Holland. He studied with the preeminent uh, physician, uh, Dr. Hunter, in London in that day. It, this was like being at the Mayo Clinic. He, he was a, uh, later served uh, in North Carolina as the Surgeon General of the troops during the Revolutionary War. He uh, invoked uh, safety and, uh, and um, sanitary rules that saved many, many lives. He uh, established a practice of uh, inoculating for smallpox, which killed more people in the war than uh, battle. He, uh, he was really a remarkable person. Once he got to Edenton, he was in the shipbuilding business and uh, commerce, but he also practiced medicine. And he was uh, elected to the legislature, the House of Commons, several times, and then he was elected from North Carolina by the legislature to the Continental Congress, or Confederation Congress that met in New York, and he, from 1782 to 1788, he was a member of, of that. Uh, he had uh, a very uh, prominent career uh, in, in government. He was elected after the ratification by North Carolina to the first and second United States Congresses. He was the first member of Congress from North Carolina to the national government. He was an intimate friend of Samuel Johnson, whose home was right across the bridge, uh, although not Hayes, it was the small house. And um, North Carolina, Edenton, North Carolina had the first United States Senator, the first United States Congressman, and the first Supreme Court Justice. I could go on, but I think we'll uh, surrender to the weather. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Judge. Um, uh, honoree today was certainly a remarkable man and obviously did a lot to get this country started off on a very sound on very sound footing um our next guest today is, is uh, a friend of mine who goes back many years As a matter of fact we were talking over at our house before we came over here walter jones mother and my mother were good friends here in edenton and uh, legend has it that he and i played together in a playpen for a while <laughs> but anyway it goes without saying that, that Walter has is, is been known to me in, uh, both as a young man, uh, known to my wife. They were in school together down in Wilmington, uh, and now he's been serving us in Congress for 22 years. And um, 
he took time out of his schedule to be with us today. So I'd like to welcome to the podium uh, Congressman Walter Jones. Uh, I am going to be uh, relatively brief because truly I hand wrote my comments today uh, with a felt pen and they're just not going to stand up. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll try just a little bit. It's very kind of Bob. Let me, I will be brief, but let me start because I want to honor not only those who dreamed of this day and wanted to remember Dr. Hugh Williamson, but also because it's Constitutional Day. My first quote is from Albert Einstein. The strength of the Constitution lies entirely in the determination of each citizen to defend it. Only if every citizen feels duty bound to do his share in this uh, uh, defense is the, constitutional, is the constitutional right of service. Meaning those who from Eden to North Carolina from the beginning of our country to today's date who were willing to give their life for this country. And there are other ways that uh, Albert Einstein intended for that to mean that those of us who are here today, that we will continue to follow not only Dr. Hugh Williamson, but those who believe strongly in the Constitution and the intent of the Constitution to be our guidance as well as our Bible. One of the quotes I found very interesting by Dr. Hugh Williamson uh, repression will provoke rebellion. That is very profound. This was attributed to Dr. Hugh Williamson, I'll repeat it one other time, repression will provoke rebellion. That only, not only at the time he made that statement, but look at America today. We must make sure that we are not repressed by making sure that those who have the privilege to serve will defend the articles of, of, the, of the Constitution as well as the articles, that we will make sure that your freedoms and the freedoms of those that will come behind us will certainly be protected and maintained. Again, these two quotes to me is why we're here in England to, uh, in, excuse me, uh, try again, uh, Eden today. Uh, we did leave England to get here, I'll say that. So, so to me, uh, what's been said today by the uh, Representative Bob Steinberg and Judge Terrence Boyle and the, and the minister, this is what America is all about. And remembering those who came before us, not only remember them in a, such a beautiful way of today, but remember them and honor them by their sacrifices. That is our responsibility. And Mayor Vaughn, I don't remember what we did in the pen, but, <laughs> but I thank you and Peggy Ann for the friendship and also the leadership. And to the ladies, Ms. Wood, Ms. Taylor, thank you so much for dreaming the dream and making the dream become a reality. That is what America is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Jones. Feel free to come back and visit us anytime. And it's kind of like Vegas, right? What happens in the pen stays in the pen. <laughs> Before we turn to uh, the Albemarle Sounds for our closing uh, song, The Singing of God Bless America, uh, I would like to send out another word of, of thanks to our Public Works Department, to our Electric Department, to our Police Department, um, and especially a couple of individuals within that group, uh, Tosh Tao and Bud Powell. An enormous amount of work and coordination. And by the grace of God, we didn't get drenched. <laughs> Only damp. Okay, at this point then, I would like uh, all of us to stand and sing together with the album all sounds, God Bless America. Following that, um, the courthouse has been set up for a reception and you all are invited to matriculate over to the courthouse and enjoy some more fellowship 
and Judge Boyle can finish telling you about <laughs> Hugh Williams. <laughs> Gentlemen. Welcome, <laughs> Would you come and lead us in the benediction now that we've reached that point in the program? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your incredible love for us. Indeed, we ask that you do guide us with the light of your Son, who is the perfect image of you, and your incredible love for your children. We thank you for this day for the hard work that has gone in to remember, the, remember those who have gone before us. We ask for your grace in these days. In Jesus Christ we ask. Amen. 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 That concludes our program here, folks. Please join us up at the courthouse. Thank you for coming out and enduring the weather. <laughs>